Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. Let me get into this topic here. Now, Stephen A. Smith uh, has been on a tear recently, uh, and he's been coming for LeBron, right? He's been coming for LeBron, and, and uh, you know what? Uh, he said he would. Uh, he said he would. Uh, he said that uh, after LeBron and his, uh, you know, and JJ Redick did their podcast, he said he thought it was a strategic move to kind of have JJ Redick arguing on his behalf, and he said it's, it's going to be something that's going to work with everyone, uh, with the exception of him. So what happened yesterday? Stephen A. Smith uh, drops a show, and he was essentially reacting to what uh, LeBron James said on his show about you know, the 2011 Miami Heat. And Stephen A. Smith got very, very upset to the point where he even cursed. And he said, this is bull, you know what? Uh, Referring to what LeBron James was talking about. And I was like, well, damn, I didn't see this one coming, Mr. Smith. So actually, for those of you who didn't get a chance to hear what he said, we want to just quickly play it as a quick refresher, uh, just to give this video some context here. And I'm going to come back and get into the show. Take a listen to what Stephen A. Smith had to say about LeBron yesterday. Let me get this out of the way. It's pretty damn good. I give both of them mad credit for it. We should all watch it. We want to hear about the subject of basketball. Those are two brothers worth listening to, no doubt about it. But that doesn't mean that occasionally LeBron don't get on my damn nerves or he won't get on my damn nerves. Because he said something this week that caught my attention about his early years with the Miami Heat, meaning year one in Miami. And talking about filling out that roster around him with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Before I even go any further with my opinion, which I will openly confess, piss me off. Take a listen to this clip, please. Courtesy of 342 Productions and Uninterrupted. Check this out. My first year in Miami, yeah, we had a big three. And everyone said it's a super team. Super team and super team net. But we had to build our team around all minimum guys, which was still okay, but we didn't fill out the complimentary guys enough. Yeah, we had Rio, we had Udonis, you know, but we didn't we didn't have enough as far as enough complimentary guys to actually make it all work. And we still made it to the finals. We still made it to the finals and we still probably should have won the finals, but I still give credit. You listen, it is what it is. You you win and you lose and we lost. There's no doubt and good and they hit it they hit a stride at the right time. Dirk was unbelievable. Um, but my second year, we was able to grab some complimentary players and role players that really just, I'm talking about super, superstars in their roles. LeBron James. That is some straight. You got to be kidding me. I know that you didn't just say that with the cameras rolling. That Somebody got to say it, so I'm going to say it. Now, let's get this out of the way right now. Put up the roster that LeBron is alluding to. LeBron is telling the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Joel Anthony, Carlos Arroyo, Mike Bibby, Mario Chalmers. By the way, Mario Chalmers could play. Eric Dampier, Udonis Haslam. Udonis Haslam was young. A young girl, considerably at that particular moment in time. He wasn't some has been, okay? Eddie House could shoot. Jawan Howard, Zadrunas Ogorskis, James Jones, Jamal Maglio, Mike Miller, Dexter Pittman. I don't know why Jerry Stackhouse was on there. He's only there for a month. He wasn't on the roster in the NBA Finals. LeBron, you want to make the argument about your roster. I totally understand. But you see, this is why I respect the man. I revere the man. He's number two on the Mount Rushmore all time. He ain't the GOAT. This is the reason why. I hope you're listening, Shay Shay. I hope you're listening, Shannon Sharp, who likes to call LeBron James GOAT James. Oh, I want to see what your response is to that sound. Because let me tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you a taste of history. That roster that LeBron James is alluding to, He makes valid points. He's not wrong about the roster. My point is, what the hell does that have to do with you, LeBron? What does that have to do with you? Now, why would Stephen A. ask such a question? Albeit rhetorically, here's why. Ladies and gentlemen, 
if you remember in 2011, LeBron James and the Miami Heat, with that roster, were up 2 1 on the Dallas Mavericks before lo losing three straight. Do you know that LeBron James in game four scored zero points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in game five, LeBron James scored two points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in that game four, LeBron James had eight points? Eight for a career 27 point per game scorer. For a dude that's approaching age 40 and averaging damn near 25. That LeBron James, eight points in an entire game four of an NBA Finals. 17 in game five, but only two points in the fourth quarter. And in game six, he had 21. Significantly and precipitously lower than his average. This wasn't about the roster. You didn't lose to the Miami Heat because of your roster. You lost to the Miami Heat because of you. Because you weren't who you are. The LeBron James that ultimately learned to become a champion. The LeBron James whose resume elevated and changed forevermore. Who showed us that he could be a champion who reminded us again by winning back-to-back -back championships, who ultimately years later overcame a 3-1 deficit and beat the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. You aren't that dude in 2011. I don't give a damn about no roster. You had D-Wade. You had Chris Bosh. You had the Haslams and the Eddie Houses and the Mike Millers of the world. You had a 2-1 lead in the NBA Finals and guarded by everybody from Jason Kidd to Deshaun Stevenson, to J.J. Barea, to Jason Terry, there was an APB out for you in the fourth quarter. That was not about your roster. That was about you. Period. There's no way around that. I don't care about the roster. The roster didn't stop you from averaging over 25 throughout the season. The roster didn't stop you from getting to the finals. The roster didn't stop you from being up 2-1 in the finals. Even when Bert Dirk Nowitzki was scoring points. What stopped you was that you were nowhere to be found in the fourth quarter. So you heard what he had to say uh, there. So what happened yesterday, there was a segment on ESPN First Take. And on the panel, they had Austin Rivers, Doc Rivers' son. And they were talking about the most influential NBA player, the most influential NBA player currently. Uh, and then Austin Rivers spoke about Kobe, spoke about Jordan, spoke about Stephen Curry. And then uh, Monica spoke his second, and then he spoke. And as Stephen A. Smith was speaking, he said something, and I'm like, bro, what is going on right now? <laughs> He started going at the Shannon Sharps and the LeBron fans of the world where he essentially said basketball people, only people that know basketball have Michael Jordan as the GOAT. Essentially saying that if you have any other player or LeBron in this case as the GOAT, then you don't know anything about basketball. And I'm like, yo, what is going on with Duke right now? Like, what is going on? Like, what are we, like, what are we doing? What are we doing, right? What's, what's, what's going on? So what we want to do is we want to play what Stephen A. Smith had to say. It's only about a minute or so. I want you guys to take a listen to what he had to say about people who don't feel that Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time. Take a listen to that there. Well, listen, I agree with you, Eminem, and, and, and the breakdown that Austin gave was right on point, mm -hmm. no doubt about that. And by the way, anybody that knows basketball is a Jordan guy, personally. Let's get that out the way right now. Anybody that knows basketball is a Jordan guy, okay? Just go ahead, go back and watch the tape, all right? But in the end, what it comes down to is this. To answer the question directly, biggest influence on NBA today yeah. is Steph Curry. Yeah. Yes. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Yes. And you're right about Allen Iverson and the culture part. We're talking about today. And when we see, it's one thing when you can point to little kids in the streets and what they're trying to do in terms of shooting the three and all of this other stuff. No, you don't even have to go there. All you have to do is go to the NBA. Mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. at the, you've never seen people jack up threes now. I mean, jack up threes before the way they're jacking up threes now. All right, now one could easily argue, and Austin, you'll appreciate this along with you, Eminem. I could give credit to Mike D'Antoni. Uh, that's all what right, I was and, thinking. and Steve Nash. Yes, you so you heard what your man had to say. I got to say, like, yo, what's going on? 
What is going? There is something that either LeBron is doing this irritating Stephen A. Smith, or maybe Shannon Sharp has said, or maybe things that are being said. I don't know what it is. But for him to say that, obviously, he's talking about LeBron, guys. Obviously, he's talking about the Shannon Sharp. Now, here's something that occurred to me while he said it yesterday. What could also be a play, and I could be 100% wrong about it is, maybe Stephen A. Smith is also saying these things to get a response out of J.J. Redick and LeBron James on his show. Or he's saying that to create a topic a uh, discussion on espn first take to drive ratings and these are all smart things to do by the way if you're trying to generate uh, uh uh what is it attention and views and clicks and all of that it's very very smart but let's get into the actual comments of only basketball fan like basketball people have michael jordan as the goal listen uh i'm a kobe bryant guy right i'm a kobe bryant guy i have him in my top three but i myself concede that mj is the goal a lot of people do. What's interesting about Jordan is the following. Jordan is able to get his rivals, uh, fans that ha that are fans of other players, all to agree that, hey, listen, this could be this is my favorite player of all time, but Michael Jordan is the GOAT. It's quite unique. Like you have Kobe fans that would admit it, Bird fans that would admit it, Magic fans that would admit it. Then you would have Larry Bird himself who would admit it, Magic Johnson who would admit it. You have Kobe Bryant who would admit it. You have all of these guys, rivals and all of that stuff, and they will all say Jordan is the go. It's you. It's very, very unique. Whereas if you have LeBron fans, it's usually LeBron fans that are saying he's the go. That's about it. Only LeBron fans believe LeBron is the go. But other NBA fans usually don't believe that. So when Stephen A. Smith says that basketball people say that Jordan is the GOAT, uh, to a certain extent, it's true, right? It is true that a lot of basketball heads say uh, Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time. To me, listen, I don't know if I told you guys a story. Um, I remember it was back in maybe 2008 or there about 2008, 2009. And I had watched the video on... A video saying why uh, Kobe was a better scorer than Jordan. And I sent this video to my cousin who's about 10 to 12 years older than me. I'm like, look, you know, they're saying Kobe's a better scorer than Jordan. And you know, the funniest thing I sent the video, I think it was on Facebook. Guess what he did? He didn't even respond to the video. I was like, huh. Then I spoke to him about it. And he's like, Charles, Michael Jordan was better. He's like, yeah, Kobe's really, really, really good. He's like, Michael Jordan was better. And I'm like, okay, I got you. Still don't believe it, but I got you. After I did my own personal research, I was like, nah, like, there's no arguing this. Like, you watch Jordan play. And I'm like, I'm looking at Jordan play. And I'm like, this is not normal. From what I heard, Jordan could stay in the air for 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.9 seconds. Do you, do, you know, do you know what that means? That means you can almost stay off the ground for almost one second. Jordan is the only NBA player I've watched and I'm looking at him. I'm like, okay, this is not normal. He's the only one. There's no one. Kobe, LeBron, you bring all of them. No one moved like that, dude. I'm looking at him. I'm like, okay, but that was freaky. Like that was freaky, freaky. We had a conversation on the channel. Who are the best finishers of all time? And I was like, I, I've, I've come to the conclusion because they talk about Kyrie's the best finisher. I'm like, no, he's Jordan is a better finisher with both hands. So people are like, what are you talking about? Like, no, go watch the video. And a lot of people are like, nah, he's actually correct. It's Jordan's shots were in, incredible. Like it's, you're watching him. It's like, it's almost like an, it's almost like a miracle unfolding in front of you. It's, it's incredible. And then you have the, 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 the eye test. And then you go now to look at his accolades, his accomplishment. And you're like, this is insanity. And you quickly come to the realization, regardless of whoever your favorite player is, you can't topple this guy. There's nobody. There's no succinct argument for and, and pe People try to make it unsuccessfully, and that's why they can't convince anyone. You can't. If you poll every, I think out of every 10 basketball players or fans, who's the greatest player of all time? I think eight out of every 10 people will say uh, Jordan. Or maybe seven out of every 10. No, maybe eight to eight out of every 10 will most likely say Jordan. And then you maybe have some Kobe's in there. You may have some LeBron's in there. You may have some Wilts in there. But the majority, always the majority going to say Jordan. It's it's just him. 
it is just even some of the biggest Jordan haters, Nick fans, uh, uh, Indiana fan, any fan, Detroit Pitt, they all say it's Jordan. It's really weird. So for Stephen A. Smith to say that, Stephen A. Smith is coming at these dudes, man. He not playing with you dudes, and I'm here for all the smoke. Let me get into this uh, topic uh, here, right? Yesterday, there was a segment on ESPN First Take featuring Austin Rivers, Doc Rivers' son. Uh, and they were, they were there essentially talking about, you know, who's the most influential player, uh, who's, who's the most influential NBA player right now, right? Now, if you guys are aware, I believe that that topic was prompted by a conversation that was had on the Mind the Game podcast with LeBron James and JJ Redick, where they were discussing the most influential players of all time. And essentially, LeBron said the following. He said, the most influential players that I've been following since I've been following the game, covering the game, he goes, Stephen Curry and Lionel Iverson. And some people push back, including myself. I'm like, how do you leave out Jordan? How do you leave out the guy that influenced all of you guys, right? Uh, how do you leave out what he did for the for the brand of basketball globally, branding for individual athletes? Like, how do you leave him out? So when they brought up the question on the panel, uh, the first person they actually allowed to speak was Austin Rivers. And as he was talking, something interesting happened. And it's something you don't see happen uh, a lot. ESPN is known for controlling the message. Usually most people say most people are going to say more or less the same thing or feel a particular way about a certain issue. Uh, and usually most of them are in lockstep. Um, but you seldom hear somebody go on ESPN and speak candidly and give Kobe Bryant his props or give Michael Jordan his proper respect without it being some silly ass pushback um, on the show. So what happened? As they were talking, uh, when, it be when it came time for Austin Rivers to react to what was being said, to my surprise, he said, you know, first of all, if you're not mentioning Michael Jordan in terms of overall, who's the he's like, there's nothing to discuss here, number one. But then he started getting into Kobe and the impact that he had on basketball and a lot of NBA players. And to be quite honest with you, I found a lot of what he was saying to be quite refreshing. So what we want to do is want to play what Austin Rivers had to say. I want you guys to listen to it in its entirety, and then we're to come back and, and, and get into the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. And who do you mentioned it? Think is that the biggest influence on the NBA today? If we're talking about today, then Stephen Curry has to be that person. If we're talking historically, it starts and ends with Michael Jordan. I think we're quick to just forget about what he's done for the game. I, it was interesting to hear LeBron on that podcast with JJ talk about most influential and not name MJ, uh, considering, you know, this guy still outsells anybody today in sneaker sales for a reason. Uh, he's the most iconic player to ever play the game. If you, if you don't know this, go watch the Dream Team documentary and you can kind of get an idea of who this guy is and what he did for the game of basketball. So much so that a guy who's the lower and like version under him would be like a Kobe Bryant, right? He's like his little brother. That's a guy who influenced the game. When I look at Devin Booker, he has B Legendary tattooed on him. I see Jason Tatum have a Kobe Bryant Mamba tattoo on him. We talk about Mamba mentality almost every week. <clears throat> These are guys who change the game. Uh, a lot of two guards emulate their game. Every good two guard we get in the NBA, we compare them to who? A Kobe Bryant, he reminds me of a, a Michael Jordan, of this, this, and that. That's who we compare Ant to, right? These are the guys who also pioneered the game and changed the game and had a huge influence. Now, we talk Stephen Curry, that's an impact, an impact on game in terms of playing style, three-pointers being shot. He's the greatest shooter of all time. He and Iverson are guys who are six foot, six foot two, if we're being generous. They're very obtainable to the eye. People look at those guys and say, man, I think I could do that. I think I could be that. If they could do it, I can do it. When you look at LeBron James and you look at Michael, these guys are six, 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 seven, freak of nature athletes, although Iverson was a freak athlete within himself, so I'm doing him a disservice there. But still, these guys, from a height standpoint, I think people saw that they could, you know, do these things. I mean, Stephen A., I think you'd ha probably have to agree with me. I know you're a, you're a Michael guy. Um, but him and Kobe, for me, are guys who are left out, specifically Kobe. People always leave him out the mix. We always jump to AI because of his culture and him wearing the clothes he wears. And now we see Shea and Westbrook and all these guys do that. By the way, Adam Silver's name should be thrown in there because if David Stern, God bless his soul, was still around, we'd probably be still wearing suits to the game. I'm not even kidding. 
So there's a lot that goes to why we're at where we're at now. A lot of names in that hat. But playing style, culture are two different things. You know, Iverson's more of a culture icon. Stephen Curry changed the way teams play. It's a copycat league. First, there was no room for bigs. Now, suddenly, we're seeing bigs. I watched the game the other night. I think it was the uh, uh, Cavs versus the Bulls. There was four centers on the court. So, you know, now that the Nuggets are winning, now we're seeing teams put an emphasis on getting centers again. It's always going to be a copycat league up and down. We are, through, we are in an era where people are too, shooting too many threes. We got too many guys thinking they're Stephen Curry and they're not. There's only one of those. Um, so, you know, he's definitely had an impact on a game. He's definitely up there on that list. I like LeBron throwing Steph on that list, but I, leaving Jordan out and Kobe out for me uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Those two guys have to be in the mix. So you heard what he said. Listen, let me get into this here. Let me give you guys my thoughts on this, this one. You know, when I was discussing the most influential NBA players, I mentioned Jordan. I think I mentioned Curry. And I for damn sure mentioned Allen Iverson. We had produced a show about Allen Iverson years ago. Um, but I didn't mention Kobe, and I'm a Kobe guy. But now that he's bringing up Kobe, listen, what he said about Kobe Bryant, I already knew. But I didn't want to be a homer. Like, oh, he's my, he's my favorite player, so I'm just going to say him anyway. No. Nah. I thought that there were other players that deserved a lot of credit and maybe more in this particular instance. But now that we're talking about Kobe, let's talk about Kobe Bryant's impact. Um, I think Kobe's impact, uh, it's... It's just as profound in certain ways as an Allen Iverson. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. AI affected or impacted, excuse me, uh, basketball in terms of players being able to express themselves, uh, dress the way that they want to dress. AI is the one that brought in corn rolls, the tattoos. At the time he did it, uh, it was something that the NBA w was against, right? And they even implemented a dress code a fort. So Allen Iverson gave a lot of players the freedom and the autonomy to go out there and kind of just express themselves and be themselves, right? So AI definitely had a big impact, but it's beyond that because AI was a fusion of hip hop and basketball and culture, uh, you know, so he had a very, very big impact. And I think he reached out to a certain segment of basketball fans and really was able to capture their imagination also with his play, with the, with the, you know, with the way he played, the way he looked as a player, with the headband, with the arm sleeves, with his crossover. That's AI, right? And you can see, uh, uh, you know, um, it kind of permeating throughout the league in various pockets. What impact did Kobe Bryant have on basketball? Well, personally, I think that Kobe is the biggest star uh, in terms of NBA star since uh, Michael Jordan. If I'm being honest with you, I think Kobe was the most popular basketball player since Michael Jordan retired, even with, you know, some of the lows that he experienced. Kobe was a global icon. Uh, and you saw this when he went to go play overseas. It was it was incredible. Like it was incredible. And a lot of the USA players said that they were like they thought they were famous until they went overseas with Kobe Bryant. And then they found out. But why was Kobe famous? I think Kobe was famous and impactful for a number of reasons. Number one, because of his play. Uh, it's very influential for that. Um, you know, a lot of guys wanted to emulate his game, as you heard Austin Rivers point out. Another thing Kobe was, you know, popular for was his mentality and his approach to his work. Kobe was known as a hard worker. And he, you know, that's where the, inf the, the infamous or inf famous or infamous, whatever, blackout sessions would come out. Uh, you know, where Kobe Bryant was arguably the hardest working NBA player ever. Right. And a lot of people learned how to improve their work ethic by being around him. The fact of the matter is LeBron, D Wade, Carmelo Anthony were all good players when they came into the NBA. But when they got with Kobe during the summer, when they were pre prepping for the Olympics, they really saw the difference between where they were and where they needed to be. And that was Kobe. He was the bar. And they realized we're nowhere near on the level of this guy in terms of his work ethic. And the moment they got around Kobe, all of their work ethic changed. Uh, so Kobe influenced a lot of players to be hard workers. Another aspect, and I think his biggest message is uh, the Mamba mentality. And this is what I think puts him above all of these guys, with the exception of Jordan. Of course, you have Curry with the way that the game is played. But I'm talking about Kobe for a second. The Mamba mentality is something that you can participate in without being an NBA player. So he was able to affect people beyond sports. He gave people a tool to be able to master themselves in their daily lives, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, an athlete, a teacher, 
a, a, a student, whatever the hell it is, content creator, whatever the hell you are, you can adopt the Mamba mentality. So Kobe Bryant left uh, 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 an enduring legacy, which was the Mamba mentality, and no other player has been able to do that. So there's no way you can't mention him. The reason I didn't bring him up was because I said, no, let me not be a Kobe guy, a Kobe homer, and just mention Kobe. But, you know, and of course, his shoes. You see his shoes are very, very popular. A lot of NBA players wear his shoes, including play, people that play sports, like uh, basketball players in college and other places. So I was very, very happy to hear that ESPN mistakenly allowed somebody to go up there and give a view when they weren't, weren't and they weren't up there just twerking it up and knocking over drinks and slapping each other with honey. So... uh the 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 playoffs are just right around the corner i checked the day before yesterday and i discovered that i think the clippers had about seven games left they played the game last night which was a thriller and funny enough i didn't watch that game but i thought I, when i saw the schedule and i saw who they were going to be playing and i saw Kawhi was out i almost wrote in the channel incoming l but thank god i didn't because to my surprise they were able to, they were able to you know gut out a very 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 impressive win i guess the uh the number one team in the uh you know in the western conference right the team that every team is trying to beat but if we look at the current western conference standings at the bottom we have the following the warriors at the 10th spot the lakers at the ninth spot the kings at the eighth spot the pelicans at the seventh spot right so essentially there's teams at the bottom trying to fight for those but i don't even know why the hell i'm, I'm i feel like yawning i don't even know why but anyway these teams are trying to fight and uh, you know, every day they're talking about the Golden State Warriors or the Los Angeles uh, Lakers and their chances to make it into the playoffs, right? And you have people like Nick Wright and others that support the Lakers heavily. So what happened? Yesterday I was watching the segment on uh, First Things First and Nick Wright spoke and then Chris Broussard spoke and a Wiles, Kevin Wiles seems to be the moderator of the show, but sometimes he weighs in. And then during like their conversation, Nick Wright starts getting annoyed <laughs> at Kevin Wiles because Kevin Wiles refused to take a concrete position. So Nick Wright reaches the point where he goes, no, no, no. I need to know what you think about this particular issue. I need to know what you think about the Lakers chances. And the minute they get into it, Kevin Wiles just starts saying this. It's like, yo, what are we even talking about? If they're that good, then why they're wrecking? And they start going back and forth. It was this hilarious one because Nick really wanted to hear what he thought about the issue. So for those of you who didn't hear this exchange yesterday, it was pretty funny. Put on your seatbelts. Take a listen to the exchange. We'll come back and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to that there. This is where, this is where, and again, even though it's not the tenor of the show, you make me angry. What do you want me to do? I want you to give an opinion. Where, where do you stand? Other than being a, a wry smartass, where do you stand on the Lakers? I want to see this. Brew wants to know. We all want to know. We know you have Denver here. Yeah. Deservedly. Yeah. Where do you have the Lakers and who do you have ahead of them I or thought your them? take yesterday was perfect. No, that you're not going to disarm me by complimenting. I thought it was, I want, I thought it was a picture perfect. I take want an opinion where you compared the Lakers to Tiger Woods, and the Masters are coming up, and you know, like, ooh, once he gets on the, oh my goodness, okay, that's it actually could happen. makes sense. It's like, hey, do you have any proof that it's going to happen? No, but I have great memories. No, what Ooh, about once last I see that year? red polo? Hold on, Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on, but if he miss, oh, he made the cut. Oh, watch out! Now anything can happen. You hear that tiger roar, LeBron? At That's not forty. A Ooh, I, I, to feel I, no, I, Bru just told me they're not good on the road, which I just showed you the graphic. Yes. They're eight and fifteen Got on it. the road against their Got own it. conference. Okay, so and there can't be good teams. No, but hold on. So but that I, would be a non-starter for mean? any other team I except I think the Woods. Tiger well, thing basketball. is a fair hold analogy. Because except... we're giving, we're going on. off LeBron's legend. He's still playing well, but we're going off Wait, his legend but, and AD. So I don't know. So the good teams thing, I'd like to dive into that because here's what I know. They. Crush Oklahoma but City, they, they right? got a record. Hold on. The record no, I, is I, what and it I is. don't know what the record is. They own OKC. The, wait, OK. They right. got OKC. They, they're 2-1 they're and one against, and they're two and one against New Orleans, who's ahead of them. They're 3-1 and one against Phoenix, who's ahead of them. They can't beat Sacramento, mm -hmm. and they can't beat Denver. I think they're 2-1, and one, or maybe they split against two Golden two State. And so, I just, when we say they can't beat good teams, what I want to know. The Wolves? Who, say it again. Josh, you're one and two, I believe. Okay, so I just want to know what we're at. So, so the reason I said give a take is I, I America knows. That was a that, take. Why much no, more of a take do no, you want? No, I, I want to know. You, you seem to think Brew and I are resting one and on two against the nostalgia and 
kismet to think that the Lakers are a dangerous team to everyone in the West other than Denver. And so I'm asking you, you, you trust Oklahoma City more than the Lakers? Yes. Okay. So, so you don't care that Oklahoma City can't beat the Lakers? If they played that the one series, I don't. that they one don't. you don't. The you trust three. Minnesota more than the Lakers? They're one and two against the Wolves. Yes. Okay. You trust Minnesota more than the Lakers? Yes. You trust Phoenix more than the Lakers? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. There's and the Denver, take. Denver, obviously. So, so you, so. But like we're having like a bronze medal conversation. No, Nick, you can't I, get past Denver. I, I don't really know what we're well, talking then let's about. I do talk think about the you. I do think all. you have to give For Rob. I, I do think you have to give what he's saying a little, you know, a little respect because we. I. I know it myself. And I, I admit the Lakers have played well, but so is virtually every other playoff team in the Western Conference. Yeah. And so I am looking at the West and saying. What I've seen this year tells me a Minnesota's better. Tells me, you know, a, a, a Dallas may be better. But I'm saying with LeBron's experience and AD being in his prime and the youth of Oklahoma City, the youth of New Orleans, Minnesota is not really young, but not that experienced. So right. I'm, but I am saying, I don't, my eyes aren't necessarily telling me the Lakers are better than those teams, but I'm saying so I, I'm – Gonna bet somewhat on LeBron against these teams. So, and, and, and what I'm saying is that I, you, this year again, Denver has earned the respect historically, and this season they're the best. Oklahoma City and Minnesota are the only teams in the West this year that your eyes are telling you are better. To me, for me, I'm not you, me, right, right. are better than the Lakers. But I correct. The Sacramento, I do, no. I mean, I mean they, they're they ahead of them in the standings, win. and they, they beat one, them eight they out of the last. More win. They beat them eight out of the last nine the, times. If they're so they've good. Played. Why aren't they better? AD, they've been they've been largely healthy. The big superstars have been largely healthy. Yes, and they're fighting. In the play-in, why are, if they're so good, why aren't they better? So, so I think that who they've been the last two months, which is what I showed, which is the only Denver and Boston have better records than them in the entire NBA. I think that but is a closer indicator of who they close. are. Because right, which is I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying that. that they are some juggernaut. So, what I am sitting here saying is they are one win away or one, I guess, I flip a result with Sacramento away from being the five seed right now. And if that were the case. But it's the no, loss column. You know, you, 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 you're, you're no, playing fast no, and losing words. But Nobody you, says they're one win behind. No, they always say they're three losses. No, you understand. Because well, that's what you need to move right, up. I guess. Uh, so you heard the exchange between these guys yesterday. Here's what surprised me. And I was laughing when I was watching that segment. Why was Nick Wright so keen on getting Kevin, Kevin Wilde's opinion on uh, the Lakers? That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you listen to his response, he goes, well, he's like, why are we making this big deal out of, you know, the Lakers if they're the ninth seed? And Nick Wright got even more upset. He's like, well, I understand that they're the ninth seed. But if you look at the way that they've been playing over the last two months, and he's like, but if they weren't, and so he's like, so what do you think about this team? He's like, I think I'll take the Wolves. I'll take them. I'll take them. And Nick seemed to be getting upset. Now, most people, when you talk to them about the Lakers chances in the playoffs, most people have the Lakers doing well against a series of teams. I've heard people say the Lakers could beat the Wolves. I've heard people say the Lakers could beat the Thunder because of the lack of their experience. Um, I've heard people say that, you know, they basically said that the only team that the Lakers need to be wary of is the Denver Nuggets. I've also heard some people say, hey, you know what? Um, I think it's a good idea for the Lakers to try to play against the, the, the Nuggets in round one. As a matter of fact, we put up a poll yesterday. About 13 hours ago, we posed the following question to the audience. And I said, do you believe the Lakers should want the Nuggets in round one? Of the 4,000 voters, 77% said no, 23% said yes. To me, I'm just basing it off a simple probability. If the Nuggets are the team to beat, if the Nuggets are clearly the best team, if you face them first, your probability of going out increases uh, in the first round. But if you play them later in, in the playoffs, who knows? Maybe another team may knock them off and you may have to face them later. But some people are saying, hey, you know, you know, they get them while you're fresh and all of that stuff. That's just the assumption that, OK, we're going to be able to beat all of these other teams. But Kevin Wilde seems to be taking a position that, listen, uh, your record is who you are. If you're the ninth seed, you're the ninth seed. But obviously things can be a little bit different because, yes, uh, last year, excuse me. Uh, the Lakers were were in the playing tournament and then they made it to the Western Conference Finals, right? So 
you know, different things can happen at different moments. I guess we just have to wait and see how things ultimately uh, pan out. But what was hilarious to me was just how 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 keen Nick Wright was to get his position on it. And of course, Chris Broussard pointed out the point about they're behind in wins where he's like, no, really, you're supposed to be counting losses, which it is true. When you're looking at the standings, losses are the number one thing you need to pay attention to. It's not the wins. 